Running order, Kurt Busch, Brian Vickers, Joey Logano, David Rudiman, and Juan Pablo Montoya, the top five in the race off pit road as we gear up for the restart. Jeff Gordon was leading this race when the caution came out. He restarts in the 10th position. Stewart and Newman have been players all day long. The four tire changes put the Stewart Haas teammates back in 14th and 16th respectively as we get set to go back under the green flag. And when we do so, we will complete lap 149, just about halfway in race 19 for the Sprint Cup Series here in 2011. Jumps out in front of Brian Vickers. David Ruderman hops in the line behind him. And Carl Edwards. Haven't talked about him today. He's up to fifth now. Actually fourth in front of Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah, Carl's car was not good at the beginning of the race. I'm not sure where he's at at this point, but they were really struggling. The players... engine problems yesterday in nationwide competition here at New Hampshire. Exited early, but it would appear they've got their act together here this afternoon, Marty. I would say they're going back towards the front. A close call on pit road with his teammate, Matt Kenseth. They made a little contact. Didn't damage the 99 car, but Carl took two tires on this most recent stop. The car has been loose for most of the early runs. You heard him a moment ago on the radio say, loose once again to Bob Osborne. But remember, an experimental setup today for Edwards, so they're hoping to see some fruit from that this afternoon, Adam. I'd like to go down to Larry and have Larry explain a little bit when we're talking about melting these beads on these tires, because you know we take for granted everyone knows what we're talking about. But Larry, can you show us what exactly what exactly happens to these tires blow? Yeah, I mean, Wally, they run such a big brake package here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and you use so much brake. And the heat is generated right out of the rotor in the caliper area into the, into the wheel itself, which is connected to the tire. As you can see, some teams are running some shields here to try to keep that heat off the wheel, but it's so close. Now, right here, I want to show you the bead of the tire. This is where the bead, this is where it actually seals to the rim. All of that brake heat gets transferred to the wheel itself, and then pretty much it just melts that bead and the tire goes down. A lot of teams are using these blowers to blow air there. That's one of the dilemmas at the 24 and the 5. They don't want to cut these blowers off because they don't want to melt the bleed. But one thing, Wally and Kyle, you know this, a bad handling car is going to use a lot more brake and be more on track of burning this bead and cooking this bead. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was going to mention that, Larry. When, when your car's not handling, you use more brake to get the car to set. And, and that's what really heats it up. And the 24, something happened coming up before, and, and I wonder if he just lost all power in that car, Matt. Absolutely, Wally. He lost all power, said nothing as far as volts. He switched to the backup battery. The engine has refired everyone here in the pit, getting ready for the next plan of attack on what to do for Gordon. Well, I, I, and I was a little bit, I mentioned to you guys under the cost when we were in commercial break, I was a little bit surprised that 24 didn't go ahead and get that battery changed. He was running 11 at the time, you know, under caution. When he lost power, now he's 35th. Last car on the lead lap, as you see Carl Edwards continue his climb to the top inside of David Rudiman. Driver 99 up to third. Right behind him, Jeff Burton getting aggressive. He drives inside of Juan Pablo Montoya for position. And how about David Reagan? First career win two weeks ago at Daytona. Huge emotion, and rightfully so. Then he goes out and finishes top ten at Kentucky, and here he comes to a track where he's always struggling and doing a great job. He goes underneath Montoya trying to get the sixth position. A little confidence goes a long way when it comes to race car driving. The ring is running pretty good a lot this year. I mean, these guys just have never been able to put it together. Obviously, Daytona, they did, and, and these guys have been on a roll since. And you can't overemphasize what this means in regard to the championship, Kyle. They're the only team entering today's race, 11th to 20th in the standings, with a victory entering 15th in points. That's incredible.
Yeah, but just, you know, just as, as David said after Daytona, he said, I truly believe it's going to take two wins. I'm not sure we're going to get there on points. We need another win. But they, you know, just as Wally said, that confidence from Daytona will carry them for multiple races. And as long as they keep running like this, they'll keep building on that confidence. On the other side of the coin, Brad Keselowski, a win at Kansas. But outside the top 20 in points, and another big hit today, Chris. Yeah, but just outside the top 20 in points, and Brad Keselowski already outside the, the, uh, the two car here, Brad. Lots of damage on the right side. You were so quick early on, but then the car faded. Was that the reason why the car got in the wall? Yeah, we just uh, didn't have very good long run speed, and the car started to push really bad. And when you push really bad, it uh, you know, puts a lot of heat in the right front tire, and it's probably what caused it to blow out. But uh, just this morning, you know, I felt like we had really good short run speed, like I said, and just uh, weren't able to make the most of our car today. So uh, we'll have to go back, work out some more. Uh, we've been running really good as of late, so uh, you know, hopefully this doesn't hurt our momentum, but we just got to keep plugging away and uh, not let this uh, hold us back. Um, you know, Team Penske's been working really hard, and uh, you see even the 22 guys over here helping. So uh, proud to have a good team. We just have to keep working on our cars. Well, hopefully they can recover before the chase. And Chris, he's now 28 points outside the top 20. It's Brad Keselowski, and you'd hate to see that win at Kansas go for not. Out front, teammate Kurt Busch, smooth sailing for him. His advantage over second place Brian Vickers, four tenths of a second, 160 laps complete here at New Hampshire.